name is Josh Knox. I'm a senior technical marketing architect for Carbon Black Container. And we are going to look at container image scanning and how that works inside of Carbon Black Container. So right now I have the Carbon Black console open. And to get to where I am in the console, you would click on inventory and then Kubernetes. And I always say Kubernetes is so special, it gets its own category here under inventory. And right now I'm, I'm on clusters. And so I have several little clusters uh, in my Carbon Black org right now. But if you notice down here, there is container images. And if we click on that, this is going to give us a dashboard uh, and show us a overview of the different container images that we have in the clusters and the scanning that Carbon Black has uh, performed. And it's going to start giving us some information about being able to uh, see if, what critical vulnerabilities exist, high, medium, low, new vulnerabilities that it's found in the last day, which is important because new vulnerabilities are being discovered all the time. And you may have containers that are running for long periods of time in your cluster. And so this is going to inform you uh, that there are some new uh, vulnerabilities that have uh, been exposed. So before we go any further here, I want to show you a little diagram and talk about scanning with Carbon Black Container. And this is going to be part one of uh, a series here on scanning. This is just the overview that we're doing in this video. And with Carbon Black Cloud, uh, Carbon Black Container, there are four points that I want to point out right now where, where scanning can occur. So you can download the CBCTL tool, which we'll look at in another video, and be able to scan manually on uh, a developer machine or any machine you would like. You can use the, the CBCTL tool to scan inside a pipeline, inside your uh, automation, your CICD pipelines and, and your build automations. You can insert it in there. Uh, we have a Harbor plugin that you can put in your Harbor and have scans running there on a schedule or a timer. And lastly, of course, scanning is happening at the cluster level uh, continually to make sure uh, that you are aware of any new vulnerabilities, uh, new images that have come into your cluster, and you're able to scan those and stay up to date. And in, in each of these, the data is always being sent back to the Carbon Black Cloud, and you can see it. That's what we were looking at there in the console. And also, if you're using that CBCTL, CBCTL tool, you'll also be able to see that uh, in the command line on the machine that you're running it from or in the logs of whatever build process you're using. So now that we know that, Today, we're, we're really just focusing on all this data that comes back to the Carbon Black Cloud, and I want to give you an overview of what data you're receiving from all these different points. So let's go back to the Carbon Black console. All right, so here we are on the dashboard again, and we have some other tabs. Oh, and by the way, there's file reputations here is malware that has it is found. Uh, we do have a little malware that I intentionally threw on here so that we could see what that looks like. We have some tabs up here. We're on the overview tab right now. We can narrow this down to uh, by clusters or namespaces or repositories. So if I uh, narrow this down to a cluster, it's going to give me another drop down, and I can select uh, one or multiple clusters that I want to focus on. And in this case, I'm going to pick this test cluster, and I see uh, what what the overview of the scans. Uh, shows me right here. So the next tab over, we're going to click off this and we're just going to go back to everything. And the next tab is deployed images. So when we click on this tab, these are the images that have been deployed in our clusters. Now immediately what jumps out at us is this malware right here, because this is the uh, container that I deployed on purpose with some malware in it so that we could trigger this and so that you would be able to see um, what happens here. But these are the images that are deployed um, in our clusters. And a lot of them are ones you would expect. Um, there's the operator for Carbon Black. Uh, Kubernetes Goat is a vulnerable app that I have installed for demo purposes, um, et cetera. 
The next uh, tab here is the image repo tab. When we click on that, this shows us all the different repositories that we are pulling our images from. Now, if you are in a larger enterprise environment, uh, this may be very important because you want to narrow down and make sure that you are only pulling images from trusted repositories. So obviously I've been pulling several from Bitnami. And see here, there's the Carbon Black Artifactory. That's expected, core DNS. And these are these are Kubernetes core components down here that they were pulled from. And then this, this GitLab down here, these are our little images that I have made. Uh, and they're coming from my harbor that I have. So this gives us a great overview of where our images are coming from and can help us when we're trying to create policies or narrow down and make sure that we are pulling our images from trusted sources. The scan log over here on the end is gonna show us uh, things that have been scanned recently. Now, in this case, I have it narrowed down to a day. So there's only been a couple things that have been uh, scanned in the last day or so. Uh, the operator here uh, hit a new version, and so it got scanned again. And you can see here, this is my, a couple of my little Docker images that I have uh, run. Now you'll see here the source, this says that this was a cluster scan. So this was an automated scan because of a change in the cluster, whereas these two scans were initiated by the CLI. And when it says that, uh, these are scans that I ran in a uh, GitLab runner. Now we'll wait and, and look at that in part two, but just know that this is where you would see those scans that you run from your build processes. So let's go back here to uh, deployed images again. And now we're going to focus in on uh, one particular image. So this is my image that has the malware in it. Let's take a look at it and we will see what other information that we can find out. So when we click on it, uh, we are given here a page of a lot of information from this container. We see that it is from the harbor.nox.rocks uh, registry. And inside that registry, it is the GitLab Python Extra repo. And so this is the overview for it. We see that here, the registry, the repository it's coming from, the lay it has 21 layers in this layers tab that we'll look at here in a second. It's a Debian container, just all kinds of great information here. Now, uh, if we look over here, we see we have a file reputation and that means that it found, uh, if it has a reputation, it means that it is malware and that's why it's over here as critical. So let's look at next the layers. Now this is a great feature a lot of times you pull an image from online and you don't know who touched that image before you did and you're not sure exactly what is in the layers on uh, these images. And so we can go all the way back to the very beginning. We already know this is a Debian uh, image. We can look at the layer. We can see packages that were used in the layer, uh, all 119 if we wanted to. And we can see the vulnerabilities that are introduced at that layer. Then we can see if we keep scrolling down here, these are uh, the layers that it appears um, has to do with getting Python set up because the base image that I pulled this from was a, was a Python image. And then we can see down here, starting on these last two layers, these are the layers that I added in my Docker file. And so I, I pip install the AWS command line Bodo 3, which is Python, uh, the Python package for being able to do AWS commands. And then I also did uh, WinRM, Py WinRM. And then the last thing I do is I copy this malware into the image and we can see it right here. And this is great. We're able to see uh, that the it was added to this layer, that there is malware here. And if we keep moving forward, we will see that uh, we can see all the packages that have been installed in this container. So if we need to know uh, of a particular package that we need to get rid of or find, um, we see there PyYAML is there. So if I put in PyYAML, um, there it is. And we can use the search to, to find, uh, find specific packages if we need to. Suspicious files. This is the malware that I copied in. I copied it into the dirty files folder. And we can see that it's critical and it is a binary because it's of type elf. And so it is detected malware.
And so uh, it tells us where that is at. If we click on the vulnerabilities tab, we can see all of the vulnerabilities that it's found in this container. And it even allows us to, if we, if we want to add an exception, we've accepted the risk for a particular vulnerability and we wanna add a note about why we've accepted that risk, maybe that's required for compliance, it's right here and you can do that. If there are fixes available, um, we can uh, sort that way. And now we see that these are some CVEs that exist in the container and that there are fixes that we could go in and maybe rebuild the container with the fix and be able to get rid of uh, some of these vulnerabilities. So that is a great feature as well. And if we click on the next tab, we see the workloads. This is great. We're able to, we, we know that there's malware uh, in this container. Now we wanna know where this container is running. So we see that it is running in a workload called Python pod, and we see which cluster it's running in the Knox Kate dev one. So in dev one, uh, in the namespace vulnhub, it is the Python pod. And if I click on this, we get, uh, it shows us this is the uh, workload, the, the Kate's workload, and it shows us uh, if we have any policies, uh, any hardening on it, any network connections it's made. And it tells us that the risk is very high um, because there are several things that are wrong. We allow privilege escalation. We don't have any limits on this, this deployment. Uh, we have a writable file system. And we're not enforcing no root and memory limits. So it's a generally bad workload. Uh, and last, we see the scan log of when this was last scanned. And it was last scanned uh, at 1.30 on May 26th and hasn't been scanned again because the pod, uh, the image itself has not changed. So there is, let's go back to our overview here and let's go back to our container overview. All right, so I think we're gonna stop part one here, uh, but there is, I, I hope you've seen there are, there's so much information and you are able to get great visibility into the images that are in your environment. And it allows you to start making decisions based on what policies need to be made, uh, vulnerabilities that need to be fixed, and maybe even just some general visibility into even, like we said, new vulnerabilities that may pop up. All right, in part two, we are going to take a look at the CBCTL tool and we'll scan a few images. We'll get that set up and we'll scan a few images uh, locally um, in the command line. Thanks for watching.